In this lesson, we'll be talking about some of the differences between IP version 6 and IP version 4. So I wanted to start off with just configuration here. So using IPv4, I can do DHCP or I can do manually. So with version 6, I can do manually, I can do automatically, or I can do link local. And you'll see here, there's actually a router field. So in order to do it automatically, I would provide a router address and my system would actually communicate with the router and it would configure a network address based on what the router said this network address was and the number of bits in the network portion. And of course it would figure out its own host portion from the hardware ID in the network interface card. So in this case, I've actually got it configured manually and you can see here I've got a prefix length, which is similar to CIDR that is used in IP version 4, indicating the number of bits that are used in the network portion of the IP address. So it's the same sort of idea there. Now, some of the big things between version 4 and version 6 is we've got larger address space, and that's a pretty considerable difference here. Previously, we had 32 bits, which gave us 2 to the 32, and now we've got 2 to the 128, or approximately 3.4 times 10 to the 38 addresses, which is a very large number of addresses. In addition to the larger address space, we actually have built in the capability of multicasting. Now, if you've done different types of streaming video or other types of streaming media, you may have done multicasting and you probably didn't even know you were doing it. Multicasting is generally implemented using a specific set of addresses inside IP version 4. Now, IP version 6 actually allows the transmission of messages to multiple destinations inside version 6. That's just something that was built into the protocol. We get stateless address auto configuration. So if they are connected to an IP version 6 network, they can use the neighbor discovery protocol to figure out where they are and be able to configure themselves automatically. We also get network layer security. So IPsec, which has been implemented in IP version 4, was actually developed for IP version 6. We've also simplified the processing by routers. There are a number of header fields that are different that make it easier for routers to actually process the packets. We get some ability with mobile IPv6, meaning we can have mobile devices like your smartphone or your tablet, for example, devices that move around a lot. We actually get some capabilities there. We've got the ability to send very large packets. So previously we had a limit on the packet size of 65,000 bytes or 64K bytes, basically. Now we've actually got the ability to use jumbo grams, which has something on the order of 4 billion bytes or octets. And so we can send very, very large chunks of data all at once. So if you have a case where you've got a network that allows you to send very large chunks of data, IPv6 will actually do pretty well for you because we can send those large chunks without actually fragmenting it up in IPv6 where we did have to in IPv4. That's just some of the differences in IPv4 versus IPv6. Again, the really big one and one of the reasons that we're really driving towards IPv6 is the larger address space as mentioned previously. But we do get a number of other features. One of the other features that actually works out pretty well is using IPsec and being able to have policies for actually setting up secure communication between multiple devices and having that right at the network layer actually works pretty well. So we get network layer security, and even though IPsec was implemented in IP version 4, it wasn't actually at the network layer. It kind of sat it sort of an odd state because of the way it had to be implemented. So now we get network layer security using IPsec inside of IPv6.